you could have went anywhere. You were a free agent. You settled here in Buffalo. I guess why for you was this the right fit? I just made the most sense. You know, I, it was a tough decision. Um, I think beforehand going into it, like the unknowns, you know, who was going to be interested, who wasn't. And then as free agency started, we had a lot of options. And uh, so then we tried to f almost make like a list of things that we needed that we thought were important. Uh, I think opportunity was number one for me. Um, you know, then obviously contract, salary, that stuff obviously comes into play. And then, you know, stuff with family. And what was the best fit for us in our life? Um, you know, I, I'm married with a little boy and uh, we got a big dog. And, you know, we didn't really want to be downtown New York City, right? We wanted to be somewhere that was livable. And this is a city that suits us. I come from Thunder Bay. I come from a blue collar family. And, uh, you know, it's just a sports town. Everything I heard about Buffalo was amazing. And, and then as we went through the process of, uh, you know, narrowing teams down and, and finding interest, right from the start, Buffalo was like the number one team in interest. Um, you know, everything that I brought to the table um, from my character to my performance on the ice, right? Obviously, talent at the end of the day is, a, you know, number one. And, but having a relationship with Phil, I played for Phil for three years in Nashville and Andrew Allen two years in the minors and Jerry Fortin was my coach in college. So, you know, I had those ties and, you know, they had a good uh, backing or they knew who I was and they were very interested in, in bringing me in to, you know, to come here and help win hockey games, but at the same time help Linus develop as a goalie too and not be here to undermine him. So you're here now, it's been just a couple weeks of camp and the preseason and everything, but how have you gotten acclimated to the city? Do you like it? Has it gone according to plan, everything, with you and your family? Yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, obviously at the start it's a little trickier. It's easier for me, I find, because you come here and you, you make 25 friends right away and you get to know guys. I, I think for my wife it's a little trickier. You know, she's at home and trying to figure it out, but the, the women of the team have been very, you know, open and helping her out with, you know, finding places, getting together, so, that, you know, that's made the transition easy, and as for lifestyle, we love it. Um, you know, we live just outside the city, and I commute in every day, and it's easy, easy living, everything's nice, everything's clean, it's, it's beautiful. It's nice when the commute, a bad commute is only 10 minutes more than what, uh, you know, an easy Yeah, commute. yeah. convenient, I will yeah. say that. We talked a little bit about this yesterday, but kind of the emotions leading up to the season, you admitted, if you're not a little bit nervous, there's something wrong with you. There's obviously excitement there. I guess as we get even closer, how are you handling all of that? Uh, you know, I, I think I, I try to just compartmentalize it. You know, I, I put that away and, uh, you know, there's times it starts sneaking up, right? You get excited for a game. You start thinking about, you know, the first game, you start thinking about the Bruins and who they have and the lineup. and. You know, but I, I think with experience, I've learned to control those emotions and, and use them in a positive factor. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if you'd want to be playing this game if you didn't have those emotions, right? Those are things that are, uh, you know, I, I think you talk to anyone who's played the game for a long time, they still get excited, especially opening night. It's, it's a fun night. It's a, it's, that's a fun thing to be around. And, you know, for me right now, it's just putting the work in, the preparation and, and getting out there, taking shots, doing the things that I know that lead to success. And I think from a team standpoint, you know, we're just trying to get our systems in place and make sure everybody's on the same page. So when we go into that home opening game, you know, we're confident in, uh, in the work we've put in. You talked about opportunity and how that was something that was the most important to you. From your standpoint, for somebody who was never a goalie, what is the biggest difference between the guy who's the starter who gets 55, 60 games a year, as opposed to the guy who fills in, like last year for you in St. Louis, getting 35 games. I guess what's the biggest difference there for you from a preparation standpoint and from a mentality standpoint? Yeah, you know, I, I think before, in, when I was more in the straight backup role, I, you know, you take a lot more pride in, in your preparation beforehand, uh, getting your work in practice, your reps, because you're not seeing as many game rep, live reps. So when you do a power, like a power play drill in zone, and, you know, you really focus on keeping it game-like, because you may not get another chance until you play in a game. So, so for me, that was a big, uh, a big factor in staying sharp when it was time in between starts. Um, I think when you get in a rhythm of playing more, and in my two years in St. Louis, I played more chunks together you know, when I would get on a run and they would kind of let me run with it. Um, so you kind of stayed in that rhythm. So what I, what I found when I was younger is a lot of guys would always say, you know, it's hard to play if you haven't played and you don't have a rhythm. But realistically, you're never going to become a starter if you can't play as a backup first. So the quicker you got over the fact of I hadn't played in a few weeks, um, you know, nobody wants to hear about why you didn't play well. So you need you needed to be mentally tough enough to to deal with starting once every two weeks. And I, I played with Pekka Rennie, who's been a workhorse for a long time in his career. So... Sometimes I go three weeks between starts, and I needed to find a way to be effective when I did play. And, and I think that's when with my practice habits and, and everything that led into it. But then I've been on the other side where I've played a lot of games, and I know how to manage the rest and the practice because you need to be able to bring it each night when you are starting. 
I didn't even have to ask you about Linus when you brought him up you yeah. know, right off the bat. What is the relationship like with him? I'd imagine it's a pretty close you know, bond that the starter and the backup or however it shapes up have, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, you know, there's never been like this upper echelon lore. Like you never, you're your partners, right? You're in this together. You're in for the good of the team and winning is everything. And, and we look at, so I, I've kind of brought it up before and, you know, every team in this league that has success lately, they have two good guys. You know, you look at Pittsburgh when they were winning their cups, you know, you had Marc-Andre Fleury and Matt Murray, you know, and then last year you had Grubauer and Holpe. And, you know, that's something that we pride ourselves in here, and I, I think we have two great goalies, and, and, and we're going to push each other. And, and it's one of those things you, you can't get comfortable. You need, to, you need to keep pushing, and I think Linus is a, a great guy for me to have and, and vice versa. You know, I think I'm going to do the same. I'm not a guy that's content in my career. I want to keep pushing and keep getting better. And, and same thing, he's just going to get a chance now to be a full-time guy. And, and he wants to do well and he wants to push. And, and he's a great kid too. We, we have a good relationship. He's, he's very outgoing. He's, he's funny. And, and that kind of suits my personality. So it's going to be a great relation, relationship moving forward. Just from an experience standpoint, you've got more pro experience than Linus. What advice can you give somebody like that? Yeah, you know, I, I think sometimes the bumps and bruises along the way are hard to prepare for. You know, it's hard to learn how to deal with the losses. But, and, and you know, a tough night, you know, the sun comes up the next day. You know, you need to be able to move on and, and park it and, and not let it, you know, continue on to the next day. So I think my experience in that sense and, and then just a general knowledge of the league and arenas and, you know, some rinks you go to play and, you know, it's, it's not, you know, sometimes you play a game down in Carolina, there's not very many fans, but then some nights you go, you go to play in a city like Nashville and the rink closes in on you pretty fast and, you know, the crowd can definitely have a, control your emotions a bit. So I think things like that, I'd be able to, you know, help them out with experience and, and certain shooters that, you know, I've played a long time in this league to, you, you know, who can play the puck and, and who wants to wire it and things that go on. So I think in that experience, you know, we can use each other to pick his brains. And, and I think a younger new age goalie, he's up to date with all the modern stuff going on, the equipment and everything. And so it's good. It's, it's a give and take relationship for sure. He's, or, um, when you were talking about just kind of the style of play and everything that you have, it's the preseason. You know, it's a very, very small sample size. But one thing that has gotten brought up a lot, whether it's on social media or people who have watched the game, is how much you like to play the puck. And it seems like how that's a big part of your game. I guess, how did that develop and why do you think that's so important? Because admittedly, as somebody who's covered hockey for a while, I'm not used to seeing goalies make stretch passes to the blue line on the power play. It's yeah, fun. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that uh, as a kid I had a goalie coach, I think when I was really young, he was kind of helping out once in a while and he had played Division One hockey and he always talked about playing the puck and being able to shoot it around the glass. So I think as a kid I, I started playing the puck a little bit. Never, I was never very good at that age and I used to shoot pucks in my backyard and I just always thought of it as this like really good asset to have. Um, and then as I've gotten older, obviously coming to a professional level, there's only so many different ways to separate yourself, right? You know, we base it on goals against, save percentage, statistics, right? So, you know, when you go into a free agency market, you're looking at goalies that have, you know, similar stats or stat lines. And then to have that asset um, to carry with you is something that's really important. And, and in my mind, I've always thought that the quicker I can get the puck out of my zone, the less I'm getting scored on, the less chances they get, the more we're winning hockey games. And at the end of the day, that's what we play for. And I've always kind of had that mentality that if we win hockey games, the rest will take care of itself. Um, as, especially as I've matured, I've, I don't really worry about the, how many shots I've had or how the game's going in that sense. You just need to control what you can. And it's, it's easier said than done. But So that's where my puck handling has evolved from, just trying to be the most efficient goalie I can. And I think during the preseason, I've been able to show it a lot because the game's still a little bit open and it's not as structured where sometimes when you get into a regular season, I, I might go a whole night and only handle it two or three times because teams... I'm not really surprising anybody anymore with my puck handling. So, you know, teams won't really dump it to me and won't make plays. But that's a good thing, too, in the sense of, you know, then our D will be able to get the puck and get it out and, and make plays. So you kind of force teams to change the way they want to attack you. Now, these next two, I asked the exact same thing to Jeff. I know you're new to the city and to the organization, but why do you feel like this team can make a turnaround? Because, you know, you come here and this was the worst team in hockey last year. Why did this seem like a good opportunity and why do you think this team can maybe make a playoff push or potentially more? Yeah, you know, I, I think they were better than their record was last year uh, in the sense, you know, at the end of the day, it was still your record. But, you know, they lost a lot of close hockey games. And I think, you know, we can clean things up and you start winning those hockey games. You w start learning how to win those tight hockey games and you become a different team. And, and the talent that's in that room is pretty amazing. And, um, you know, obviously what we brought in and what was here too, right? It's just got to be controlled in the right sense. And, 
you look at some team, you know, you even look at like Vegas, they didn't really have the outright superstars that everybody thought. They went and got a bunch of depth guys from, from different teams and, and you start playing the right way and you start buying in, you know, things can go well. And uh, so I have all the confidence in that and, and just the way that everyone's attitude has been here has been amazing. And, you know, you hear all these stories about last year and the, the culture and I'm almost kind of blind to it because I've been here so far and everything has been like great it's been a hard camp everything is upbeat everything is going well so it's it's definitely a lot of positives to draw from so sometimes when I'm asked that question it's kind of uh I'm kind of lost on it because I don't see that culture here I don't I don't feel it in any sense so it's it's great to know that and and I know the old Buffalo Sabres that I used to play against you'd come in here and you almost felt confident you were going to beat them and and play well and and now what we want to build here is we want to build a building that you come into and no matter what, you're going to, you're going to have a tough night. You know, we're not always going to win every single game, but no matter what, when you come into Buffalo, it's going to be our home ice advantage and we're going to make you pay and we're going to bring that mentality on the road. Last question. Fill this sentence out. 2018-2019 will be a successful season if? Uh, we make the playoffs. <laughs>